So, what is going on guys? I am Black Ops Amazing. Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another Zombies Q&A, the series on the channel where I take your questions from the comment section below to do with the zombie storyline, easter eggs, and I answer them. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, you know what to do. Drop a like, rating. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest content on the channel. But, let's get into it. Here we go, and enjoy. So, the first question of today is from Dallas Gaza, and you say... Who created the pack punch machines on Shadows and Origins? So after years and years of theories in Tagdo Toten, it was finally revealed to us the backstory of the pack punch Who created it? Where its origins came from? We know the pack punch machine was originally designed by a blacksmith called Jebediah Brown. He came from the old western town of Buried back in the 1800s. That was before it was teleported to Angola. I have told the story of how the pack punch was created fully in a different video, so if you want to check that out, I will link it down in the description. But quickly, just to go over the important points for this question, we know that back in the 1800s, Jebediah was visited by two angels who came down from the heavens and told him to build the pack punch That's exactly what Jeb did, and then a few other events went down, where on the 22nd of July, 1885, the two angels visited Jeb once again, telling him to put a metal vessel that he built inside of the pack punch machine. And when he did, all of the energy, all of the power of the world got sucked out of the air, pulled inside of the pack punch machine, and the old western town was teleported to Angola beneath the surface of the earth. All of the townsfolk then turned into the undead, Jebediah was eventually killed, and everything in the town was destroyed, including the pack punch machine. That was until years later in 1942, where Richthofen sent members of Group 935 on an excavation mission to Africa, where they travelled to Buried and recovered a number of artefacts. And some of the things they recovered were pieces of the destroyed pack punch machine. Richthofen gave schematics of the pack punch to Dr. Porter, where Porter used it to rebuild the pack punch and that's the story of its creation. However, that only tells us how the original pack punch machine was built. The very first one that we saw, the regular one, I guess you could say. However, as the question says, there are other versions of the pack punch machine. The one in Origins, the old rocky stone looking one. We then have the pack punch machine in Shadows of Evil. This one is kind of a hole in the wall, a portal and then a tentacle that comes out and gives you the weapon. We also have the golden pack punch machine which you can find in Tag Deer Totem. Slightly different versions of Group Man 35s such as the one in Transit which you have to build that has a battery on top of it. If Group Man 35 built the original then where do these others come from? The one that we find in Shadows of Evil in the underground section looks very old. It clearly wasn't built by someone. It is kind of like this circular stone held up by chains and then once you do the ritual a portal appears in the middle and on the inside is a tentacle. It gives you your weapons back after it's pack punched How on earth this works, I'm not too sure. The stone itself is surrounded by the Apothecan language. Also, the tentacle looks like something an Apothecan would have, such as a Magua. So maybe it has something to do with the Apothecans. This whole underground section was also home to them. So there's that, but... This seems to have something to do with the ancients. It's a similar story for the pack a punch in Origins, an ancient looking machine. We do know that the pack machines are transported from location to location by Dr. Monty. That's the reason why we see them in every map, even though one pack a punch by Group 935 was built. There's only one of the original Group 935 pack a punch machines, but we see it multiple times because Dr. Monty transports it from location to location. But that doesn't explain why it changes shape or why it looks different. The machine in Origins is similar to the mystery box in terms of looks. They've both got these swirling patterns on them. We know that Monty also gives us the mystery box. And then as for the other variations such as the golden packer punch or the buildable packer punch, why is it golden tag? Why is it broken up and we have to rebuild it in transit? These are questions that we've never officially had answers to. So yeah, why we have different looking packer punch machines, I guess we'll never know for sure. The next question says, can you still see Moon in the Giant like you could in Darice? So this is a very old easter egg, some of you may not know this, but if we go to Darice, the final DLC map for World at War back in 2009, if you take a look at the moon, you can only see this if you use a sniper or you noclip, it's too far away for you to be able to see it normally, but if you zoom onto the moon from Darice, you can see there are several red dots. Counting these red dots, there seems to be five of them in a circle, and then in the middle, there is a sixth, but what we are seeing is 
Griffin Station. The moon's over 384,000 kilometers from Earth, but you were able to see it if you zoomed in from Doris. So this at the time was very interesting because Doris was a World at War map back in 2009, and then Moon didn't release as a map until Black Ops 1 in 2011. But of course, during the time when we played Doris, Griffin Station on the Moon was already built. Griffin Station was actually completed in 1942, and we played Doris three years later in 1945. However, what's interesting is, on the remake of this map, the giant. If you zoom into the moon here, you can't see Griffin Station. These red dots that could be seen from Doris can't be seen on the moon in the giant, which surely suggests that during the time of the giant, Griffin Station isn't there. Why else wouldn't we be able to see it? It's a very interesting question. Now, there are a few theories behind this that people have. The first one being that we are seeing a different side of the moon. However, we only ever see one side of the moon from Earth. If you've ever heard of the saying, the far side of the moon, that is the side that we don't get to see from Earth. In total, the biggest percentage of the moon's surface that we ever get to see from Earth is 59%, meaning that the theory of Griffin Station being on the other side of the moon during the time of the giant just doesn't work, because if where it's located, it would always be facing Earth. Another theory is, Griffin Station wasn't constructed during the time of the giant, however, it was. The giant does take place before Doris. We can see from the intro cutscene, it happens just after Richtofen teleports Maxis and Samantha away. It takes place on October the 13th, 1945. We actually play Doris over two weeks later on October the 28th, 1945. But even though the giant takes place before Doris, it's only a couple of weeks before, and Griffin Station was built in 1942. It's still three years before the giant, so it should be constructed. Another theory people have is the giant takes place in a fractured universe, which is true. It is a part of the Deceptio fracture. However, the map after the giant, Derizon Draco, also takes place in the Deceptio fracture because our characters don't time travel from one map to another. In order to travel from the giant to Doris, they take one of the giant robots from the facility, and then we see in the Duraz and Draco intro, they are in that giant robot traveling to the castle. So because the crew don't use a rift or teleport from one map to another, the giant and Duraz and Draco take place in the same fractured universe. And we know for certain Moon exists in Dorizon Dracker. It's a part of the Easter egg. In Dorizon, Richtofen is constantly communicating with Groff, who was on the moon base, and even in the end of that Easter egg, we destroy the moon in order to destroy Griffin Station. So Griffin Station 100% exists in the Deceptio Fracture, which is the universe that both the giant and Dorizon Dracker exist in. If it's still there in Dorizon, then it has to be still there in the giant but we can't see it. You could also see these same dots on the moon in another map, which was Dairise. If you zoomed into the moon with a sniper on this one, it's a lot harder to see just because of the contrast of the moon. It's a lot brighter than it was in Doris, but those red dots are there in Dairise. That's Griffin Station. But why can't it be seen on the giant? It still exists, but it's not visible. Was this just down to Treyarch forgetting to add it in? Possibly, or is there a bigger reason behind it. You would just think if we were able to see Griffin Station on the original map, Doris, we would also be able to see it on its remastered map, The Giant. Yes, they are in different universes. The Giant is a part of a fracture, but Griffin Station was still built during the time of The Giant. So that's all I have to say. Let me know your thoughts about that one in the comment section below. And the final question of today from Ancient Dummy says, Hey BOA, how come the Victus crew never encountered the Hellhounds? Well, first off, the Hellhounds aren't on BO2. Well, they are, in a way. I believe the only map you can have them on is Town. If you go into custom games, you can actually turn Hellhounds on. However, when you play custom games, you are the CIA or the CDC. You don't play as Victus. This option isn't available for transit. And then the other maps, Darius, we have the Callers. Buried, we have the Witches. Mob of the Dead, we have Brutus. So yeah, even though we can get the Hellhounds on Town, we don't play as Victus. They never come up against them. Why? Well, I mean, we usually change bosses or whatever you want to call them for every map. You could just as easily ask why don't the Shadows of Evil characters come up against the Hellhounds? They just don't. Instead, they're faced with 
other enemies. For some reason, Richtofen, who at the time of BO2 was in control of the zombies, didn't send the hellhounds after the transit crew. So guys, there we go, that is it, that is all we have for you for today's video, as always, hopefully you have enjoyed, if you have, you know what to do, drop a like rating if you want to, if not, it's totally fine, thank you guys for watching anyway, make sure you are subscribed, leave your thoughts in the comment section below and your questions, and until next time, goodbye.